Hello everybody and welcome to the Human Echoes Recap for Krypton Season 1 Episode 2. This one's called The House of L. Last week, I reviewed Episode 1 and I talked about how I had looked at the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and I was not sure where the negativity was coming from. Okay? I, I was not necessarily ecstatic about Episode 1, but I thought it was pretty good. Now we're here in episode two, and I'm starting to see the problem that the reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes had. I'm starting to get what the issue with this, that they took with this show is, and I'm having some of the same issues. So, let's dig in and talk through it. Uh, starting right off with, you knew this was coming, right? In a post-Star Wars Joseph Campbell mythos universe, you knew that we had to have the hero refuse the call. All right? Adam Strange has come to him. He said, listen, dude, bad stuff coming. You got to help Superman, grandson, and all that jazz. And Zeg is like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Got this revenge thing going on. You know, my parents just died, and I'm going to go take out that other dude. Don't care about this brainiac weirdo. Don't know nothing about my grandson. I will do know about my mom and dad, and they're dead. And the motivation here is okay, but it was a little bit annoying to me just how far away I could see this one coming. Like, the instant that the credits started rolling, I was like, We're go he's going to not want to do this, isn't he? And the way it plays out is irritating to me as well, because throughout the rest of the show, he's in the room with Vex, the man who is responsible for his mom's death and his dad's death and like is trying to control him and i think this is a problem with the actor who's playing seg but you don't read a lot of rage from him towards vex at least i didn't get that like his plan through this whole episode until he gets evidence to the contrary is that he's going to kill vex vex killed his parents he's gonna get him back and Yet, when they're in the room together, he's just sort of like having a casual conversation with the dude. That's not how revenge works. Like, you need to have some shots of him like clenching his knuckles on a chair or something, just like barely restraining himself from decking this guy right away. I mean, he's he can hold his own. At, at one point, we see him buy a knife, right? Like, that's some big momentous occasion from a dude in a back alley it's not it's a knife it's not even a cool knife okay it's just like it's a dagger about that long maybe it's a special science knife i don't know maybe it's got poison on the tip but just kill him if that's your motivation seg i don't i don't i was not 100 percent on board with that but you know his whole thing is that he wants to kill vex and strange does like make some inroads here he says okay like i get it i understand you're mad at the dude who killed your mom but hear me out you're going up that way anyway you're gonna be in the neighborhood just go check on all the planetary science computers that they have laying around and see if what I'm telling you is true they'll have some evidence because apparently the civilization that is absolutely adamantly convinced that there's no other life in the universe still has like a massive astronomical program somewhere pointing sensors out into this universe for some reason i mean we don't there's people on earth that don't believe in aliens and we still have a lot of telescopes taking pictures and stuff but the fact that this is so well established is a little bit silly to me but yeah he, he decides to go up he, he he meets up with vex again not like a super indication that he's about to punch the guy or slit his throat or anything and we run into the second problem with this episode which is that apparently you know how like some cities have like a motto, right? Or like a, a you know, a, a special name that people give them, all right? So you, the states will have, uh, I don't know, Tennessee's like the volunteer state, Florida's the sunshine state. Candor is exposition city, y'all. Because people are telling other people things that they probably already know throughout this episode. And it starts here with Vex, who's giving Seg a history slash religious lesson 
about who Rao is and the other seven or so gods, by the way, it might be less than seven, but you know, sort of way to not rip off Game of Thrones there. Although I, you know what? I'm gonna back off. I don't know enough about the comics. Possible George R. R. Martin ripped off Superman because he's ripped off some other comic stuff in Game of Thrones uh, that is that you would not expect. So I'm, I'm not gonna go down that road, but they're very similar. Uh, and I've seen Game of Thrones first, so that's where I'm coming at it. <clears throat> He tells him that, and then at some point, like in addition to all of this religious history that I assume that a dude who's living in a theocracy already knows, he also tells him, now don't forget the dome is the only thing protecting us from annihilation. If we didn't have that dome, we'd be dead. No freaking duh. I mean, I get that people do have these kinds of conversations in real life sometimes, but that's like 50% of what this episode is. <sighs> Following that up, we have, I would say, relatively unmotivated, although I, I, I can get on board somewhat with this. The militia is gearing up to go to war with the Rankless. And of course, this is Light Azad's story here. And Light Azad being in love with one of the Rankless and having sort of spent time with them is like the only person in this world that has any problem with this. And she starts you know, kicking her feet a little bit and saying, no, no, we're not, I don't want to do this. Why are we just going to go slaughter these people? There's some good ones. I, I did, one of the things that I liked, despite the fact that there's still more clunky exposition in this, but she has a talk with her fiance uh, and he talks about his like need for vengeance. That the, the black zero had killed his parents or he doesn't come out and say it, but basically he's like, Hi, I'm an orphan and I have bad feelings towards the Black Zero and the Rankless by extension. Okay, it's one of those scenes, but it does make sense. All right, it, it's, it's a relatable conflict and one that we as humans play out a lot, okay? We have seen, and we as, um, you know, as American, any nationality, I think, has some other people that they're like, those guys did bad to me. And the other people are pointing out, hey, no, you did bad to me first. I'm like, well, what about before then when you did bad to me before that, huh? And then you just like go back to like the beginning of human history and everybody hates each other because of like an endless cycle of violence. That's what's going on here. And that's a very believable conflict. Light is odd though, it, again, the only voice of reason in the room decides she ain't having it. So she sort of tries to countermand her commander that which gets kicked up the chain to her mom who's like uh, I'm in charge of all these people and you don't get to talk back to the person that's over you just because I'm your mom okay so not that's not happening she doesn't get the the mom card here to get out of jail free although you get the sense that mom probably isn't getting her out of jail free very often anyway and there's a moment here after this where Lyda meets up with Seg and she's talking to him about him, he's gonna go to, to Vex again, all right? And she says to him, you need to be true to yourself. I, I wrote that down as a quote. I believe that's exactly what she says. And this sentiment, be true to yourself or be yourself, is uttered by three different characters in the course of this episode. I, I'm all for the idea that you should be yourself, okay? I, as a kind of a weirdo guy who's just not, concerned about it anymore at all. I'm fine with being myself. I think that other people should be fine being their, themselves. That's all cool. Nobody in this show is having a problem with that. As far as I can tell. Light Azad is not like, I was forced to be in the military, but really I want to arrange flowers. If only I could be myself. Like, no. She likes beating on people. She solves problems with fight. Seg is... You know, I mean, he's rankless and stuff, and now he's maybe going to get a name, but it's not like they're asking him to give up some belief that he has. He just is going to get to move to a nicer house. What, where is the be yourself mantra, mantra in here working? Who is it for? None of these characters are anything but themselves. And it's the second episode here, which means... We, we haven't really had time to establish like what they want to be versus what they like what they are they, they haven't maybe we have had time but they haven't spent the time doing that so we just have some characters who are telling each other to be themselves and that doesn't have any relevance to anything in the plot at all that that irritated me so 
you, you can see where I'm going here, where this is sort of starting to let me down. But while we're sort of bashing on the second episode versus the first episode, I have to say, I sort of hypothesized the first episode, maybe they front-loaded a lot of those graphics, sort of made it look poppy and movie-like for the first one, and we're going to have a lot cheaper graphics going forward. And that seems to be the case, okay? Not that the special effects are still fine when they show them, but there's a lot of people in, like goofy gray rooms that might have been made out of styrofoam and nothing else like not any less sprawling cityscapes now less uh less sort of open areas now we're in a lot of hallways in episode two which is i i don't take issue with that okay I, I, i'm just again just comparing episode one to episode two it's clear that they did do that front loading thing you can tell a good story in a gray hallway Okay, that's fine. I've, I've enjoyed a lot of cheap television that employed a lot of cheap television tricks. And if you're telling a good story, that's great. For me, the second episode was not. <sighs> Lyda's fiance, right before a fight that she picks with her commander, gives her the second be yourself speech. And then gives her another, I'm sorry, her mom gives another info, info, info dump. I can say those words about what's happening. So Lyda decides the only way that she can take, you know, protect the people who are rankless from just getting slaughtered here is if she challenges her commander to combat, to trial by combat. They have this in the society. If I just said trial by combat, okay? Everybody out here in the comments of the YouTube or like if you want to tweet me at Twitter, Albert underscore Berg, raise your hand if you were like trial by combat. Tr wait, wait. So like trial but it's by, what are you, like, nobody no, doesn't understand what that is, okay? Everybody gets that there are societies where you could decide stuff by fighting people. But you know what we get, you know what we get, because we, as you walk into Candor City Limits, it does say Exposition City. We do get an explanation for what this is. Yeah, she gets to fight him, and if she wins, she's in charge now. We understand that. It, Th thanks for explaining Lyda Zod's mom, Primus Zod, what is going on here. But we have seen a movie before and read a book, so so we get it. But she has this fight, and it's it's not super well choreographed. And we get it's cut into two pieces in the show. So we have the start of the fight, and then we just sort of wander off with Seg for a while, and then we come back to the fight. I don't know if it's just been going for like an hour or what. Seg's subplot takes him into, like, back to arguing with Adam Strange. He still hasn't killed the guy, all right, because he's gotten distracted. The the hot fiancé that he has now, the blonde chick, uh, by the way, killer outfit in this episode. Love that. Um, she, she gave him the ashes of his mother and father. She's trying to manipulate him. It has his sigil on the, um, the ashes canister, which... You know, we got the, the Superman symbol. They were less heavy-handed with it in this episode than they were last, which I was appreciated that. And uh, he goes back after, you know, sort of wrestling back and forth with uh, Adam Strange. He goes back to his Fortress of Stol Solitude and finds the hologram of his grandfather, right? He opens it up with blood because, of course, he does. That's how things work in this universe. They sort of establish that in Man of Steel, so whatever. His grandfather appears... And we get the third be yourself admonition. Second one to Seg. Because he wasn't being himself enough, I guess. And this is where this wind really goes out of the sails. Because the central conflict here is... We've established this in the first scene of the episode. Seg has two choices. He can either deal with Brainiac. Or he can deal with Vex. Alright? He goes... It, 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 the, the choice that's presented for him is that if he d if he goes and defends the city from Brainiac, he's going to have to go along with Vex and sort of at least pretend to be his friend. Whereas if he just kills Vex, he'll, if, uh, yeah, he'll get the death penalty, he'll probably get shot on the spot, but he'll get vengeance. And then his grandpa just like undoes all of that tension and says, why don't we do both? I don't know, why don't we do both? You, the, the story set up this conflict like it was going to be the central thing. Throughout the whole episode, Adam Strange is like scrabbling around. And even after this, like trying to find evidence of Brainiac. Because he needs to prove 
that Brainiac is coming, all right? Seg doesn't believe him, which is, uh, I guess, understandable. He lives in a society that doesn't believe in aliens, never seen evidence of aliens. This random dude with a weird hat shows up and says, I'm an alien and there's another alien coming. I, I could see where you'd be skeptical and also be mad that your mom was dead and want to go avenge that. That all makes sense to me. But then he's essentially, he's talked to his grandfather. His grandfather said, yeah, there's, there's stuff out there. I found it. You know, again, hologram grandpa, but still like he's got the info. He knows that it's true. And they go to the trouble of still showing Adam Strange and Seg's best friend from the bar going to this meteor impact and trying to get evidence of Brainiac. At, at which point every bit of narrative tension around that act has been completely diffused. There's no need for them. Seg is already on board with just doing both, which apparently he can do. There's a lot of cracks in this story at this point, in this episode, and this, the way this episodic storytelling is going, they, they've, a, a death knell for me for TV shows is when they start spinning their wheels. and. For them to start spinning their wheels on episode two is a bad sign because we don't accomplish anything. When we, we were at the beginning of this episode, we knew that Seg needed to stop Brainiac and that he wanted revenge against Vex. At the end of this episode, Seg needs to stop Brainiac and he wants revenge against Ek, Vex. The only thing that's really progressed here is that Light Azad is now in command of her own unit which is a kind of a weird thing because we establish her in the first thing is like a almost a recruit like the way that they set those people up in their training and the way she gets beat down by her moms it's like these are sort of like the grunts and now just because she happens to beat this guy up which apparently she can do and i don't know why this doesn't happen more often because we see the commanders and they're all middle-aged dudes except for uh primus side and i feel like that some of these younger people who are warriors from their birth, right? Like essentially they've been engineered to be warriors. Maybe they would want to have a little bit more power and still feel like that guy looks a little flabby. I could take him out. I don't, maybe those guys know some super Kung Fu that they don't teach the younglings or whatever, but it's just it, knowing that you can take down people by trial, by combat. I was just thinking, why is this not happening all the time? Just on the reg. Maybe it is. Maybe we're about to see a whole bunch more of that, but it seemed a little bit flimsy to me. Seg goes to Vex. He tells him he won't take his name. All right, he, it's a, 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 almost like insulting fake out. He went through the whole, like he bought the knife thing. We see him with the knife and it doesn't pay off. Okay, Chekhov's gun ends up getting like fired in the air and he, cut, he uses the knife to cut off his, the name badge, the, whatever that, the sigil patch on his vest for the house of Vex. And Vex is mad and like, how dare you? And of course, at that point, the voice of Rao shows up and diffuses any tension. Because what you really, see here's a, here's a trick, writers. Uh, when you've, what you wanna do is, like not let conflict happen, okay? See, see when, when, when conflict starts to happen, what you need to do is have a deus ex machina come in and just diffuse it instantly, okay? Because conflict people don't want conflict okay people want happiness and contentment from all the characters in their story this is sarcasm that's not what you do that's not what you do krypton instantly diffuse any consequences and of course rao is like we will use this to get control of them or whatever but no it's just cheap the voice of rao has no reason to do this it's it's stupid on so many levels Disappointing. Of course, at the end of the show, by the time it doesn't matter, Strange finds the, the little seed pod thing or whatever, and he comes back to Sag and he's like, he's already here. He's sent ahead a, a pro, essentially a probe droid. If you've seen Star Wars with a little big, guys, it's, it's one of those, uh, but Brainiac style. He, he literally says he's already here. I don't, I don't think he means physically. I think he means like he, he's watching us. He has intel on us. Because there's no evidence, like the fact that he sent a probe ahead is not good evidence that he's actually physically already there. But maybe I've misunderstood something in how they set that up. It, there's a lot of sloppiness in this episode. And I was disappointed. Because the first episode, while it, again, not perfect, 
set some good stuff up that has an interesting society, all right? This whole idea of people engineered from birth to be a certain thing and, you know, do you struggle against that or not? Also, the fact that they have the be yourself mantra at all in this universe, like, nobody in this society should have said be yourself to anybody in the last 300 years. They, their whole deal is that they be what they were born as. All right, that's their whole jam. They haven't been watching Disney Channel movies about how it's cool to do whatever you want. And again, putting aside the fact that it doesn't even make sense for these characters to be talking about being yourself, this, like, this idea is completely antithetical to this society that engineers people to be certain things and engineers their lives to put them in that path. For, t for be yourself is heresy here. And nobody bats an eye. Nobody's like, I can't. I can't be myself. Don't you understand? I was birthed to be a science off Whatever. Holes everywhere. I'm going to keep watching, all right? And we're going to keep talking. But generally, as a recapper, it's my policy not to just endlessly dump on things that I hate, all right? So we're going to go a few more episodes into Krypton. I'm going to see if there's, you know, stuff in here that I'm enjoying enough to continue talking about. I know that people who are looking for recaps are generally not like nobody almost nobody hates a movie and then says, "I'm going to go find some other people online that hate that movie." Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to type that in the YouTube search. So it's not good for you. It's not good for me if I don't like it. Um so uh, we'll see how this goes. We're going to this you're on probation, Krypton, is what I'm saying. But if Krypton ends if, if we cut off Krypton, we'll do something else. It'll be cool. Um, and I hope that it does turn out cool. There's a lot of potential here. There's, uh, there's a lot of elements that could be put together in different ways that could really make this a cool story if they do it right. Will they? We'll find out next episode. I appreciate you, appreciate you guys for watching. And if you have comments or things that you disagree with, I, if you're a fan of the show, you probably have lots of things to disagree with in what I've said here today. Uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if you don't like me, I can take it. Just let me know. Just blast it. Leave a like or a dislike as you prefer. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more things like this. If you're on the audio side, you can't subscribe to YouTube channel. Uh, because you're listening on audio. You should go on uh, YouTube and uh, listen to that, find us there. And also, speaking of the audio side, we are continuing to make these available as audio only products, so go check that out. Uh, it's in the link in the description if you want to hear my words but not see my ugly face. Till next time, I'm Albert Berg, and you guys take care.